All right, so here we go. It's time to get everything installed and put up. So this is what I was talking about, uh, an amp clamp meter. So our batteries are good. You know, you clamp it on the wire and that's how we'll set the amperage for it. But that's way down the line. I got a multimeter and this paper is good. If you're, especially either, it doesn't matter if you're wiring or, you know, if you're changing wiring or whatever, it's always good to have paper to write something down. So I'm going to write the connections I have, what colors I have on what for the old VFD. So I know when I do the new ones, I'll have it all written down. And uh, I already changed, turned everything off at the circuit panel. I'm not going to show you how to wire a circuit panel because that could kill you. I'm not going to be responsible for it. Find someone that's an electrician or someone to, you know, if you need it. I ran 220 off my, you know, for my heat treat oven, for both grinders. And uh, it's pretty simple, but it's very dangerous. All right, let's get to taking the other one apart. All right. First things first, you turn. See, switch on, switch off. No power. So we know we're good. It's one thing we don't want to do. Don't want to fry ourselves. All right. Now, just for giggles, we're going to put it on uh, bolts AC and check. Make sure there's nothing. Yeah, 0 0.013 AC, so we are good. Nothing there to fry us. When you're running 220, the black and the white do not matter. They both have 110, you know, so alternating. So it doesn't matter how you hook up those two. But coming from the motor, the UVW does matter. So it looks like uh, U is black, V is red, or no, wait. Yeah, okay. Yeah, V is white. See, I would have had to switch them all around. And W is red. So, like I said, the 220 doesn't matter how you hook it up, but the UVW, that's gonna determine if the motor spins forward or backwards. And uh, all these right here, you know, when you're hooking up a VFD, these, charge, these are how you hook up your potentiometer. I did another video on hooking up these Chineseums. But with the NEMA 4, it's already installed, so you don't have to worry about any of this. It's all right there on the box. All right, let me get this taken down and move on to the next step. All right, next let's get this box out of here. Electronics are fun, man. Once you get them all figured out and hooked up, switch. I don't need any of that no more. <laughs> that box did do me well, I'll say that. Oh, wow, nice. All right. <laughs> Look how I tape my wires all up and get everything. <laughs> so, let me get this cut. Let me get this. We don't want to cut into this. Well, we'll see. I'm cutting over where the you know potentiometer wire, potentiometer wires were. There's a bunch of extra wire I got for something else now. <laughs> this just show you how there's motors on. <laughs> So 
Yeah, I got this on the chill. Hmm, shall we go? Come on. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so motors on the tilt like that. You definitely do not need all this wire. So that's where I have it. I want to be over this hole. So what we will do, yeah, so we want to be back like that. So what I should do is just notch it out, huh? You know what? Let me see something here. <laughs> yeah, see the tension of the belt. Whoa, I'm gonna pinch my fingers. That tension of the belt keeps it. Well, look at that. Since I left my screws in here loose. <laughs> Maybe I'll just leave it there. You know what? Yeah, then that will come up into here. Man, this job's gonna be easier than I thought. I am gonna notch it here though. That sounds good. Put a little notch right here. Slide it over as much as you want. But yeah. All right. Look at that. Ta-da! And this will come up under here. And that will come up under here. I'm a, you always want to cut it long because this can go back and this can go down but you can't make it I mean you can splice it and make it longer but that's pretty dangerous so let me see I'm going to want to mount this hole here I'm going to a hole here a hole here Damn old ruler. There we go. Oh, Alright. Uh huh. Let me go see what I have for mounting. So I got yeah, these are too big. What's let me see something here. I'll take one out. Alright, I'm going to have to go to Home Depot and get some more of these, but just to hold it tonight, you should be good. So I'll drill these four holes. I'm not going to show that. You've seen me drill plenty of times. Let me go drill these four holes, then we'll come back, put the motor up, you know, drill holes through there, and go from there. Alright, let me get this drilled out. So let's mark where we want this bad boy. Here. Right here. Right here. will be about five seconds for you. I'll get the uh, screws and get it off so we can wire it up. All right, I'll be back. All right, here we are back again. I took this switch off and uh, because, you know, I could run the power straight in to the box, but I think I'd rather have it stop at the switch just in case something went wrong. 
and when I blow out the switch and mess up those electronics, they just power surge here. So I'm gonna mount it right down here. You know, I'll just run, here's the cables from the circuit or from the box. Bring them in here. I made sure when I took the switch off to mark this was out. So this side goes to the drive. And uh, right now all I've got for extra cable are what I took off the potentiometer. So I'm gonna get it running because I'm not gonna wait till tomorrow. I've already, you know, wasted enough time. I did get the bolts today or the, uh, you know, the lag screws. So I can go back and put all this back in. I got longer ones from the front. Yeah, I got longer ones on the front because it's not going to that two by four. Yeah, because once I get this all set up, I can just, you know, it's just two wires and two wires here. You know, I'll get the right size. I mean, it says the three. I think these are 12, no, these are 14s and it suggests using 12. Yeah, I like to cut, you know, like if I was to cut this wire, which is, you know, down like here, you want to try to always make sure it's over this paper stuff. But I think this one will tear enough because you don't want to end up slicing into your uh, wires because that's how you get fires and blown circuits and bad connections and shorts and all that bad stuff. Sometimes with this, see how the paper's right there? You can take it and you can score it. You don't want to cut in deep, you just want to score it. And then see it'll tear down. Because once you go through the plug, go through the rubber, then uh, yeah, then see, you take all the wires here, and then you just cut straight down like that. Then that gives you the wires. Now let's put these all clean. Start fresh. All right. If you want to do any kind of wiring stuff, it's best to get one of these strippers. These things work great. I'm going to leave a little bit more on the green. Okay, we're through the box. So what I'm going to do right here is take a red, take the red one. Because this red one comes in and goes right back out. And a lot of times with electricity, it also has to do with the run. I'm only going two foot. 14 should be fine for that little run. So do that, twist them up, do the cap, and it should be just like a, you know, a bolt. Yeah, see now it's tight. But I don't like leaving it like that. That's why I've got so much tape on all this crap. Electrical tape is cheap. Especially when you're risking burning down your house or blowing up your motor or blowing up your uh, VFD. And a lot of times, since the screw's going clockwise, you want to put it from the left to the right so when you tighten the screw down, it goes with it. It doesn't push it back out. Electronics 101. <laughs> now 110. White is neutral and you know black is hot, so you got to be careful with how you're wiring things. But 220, and you want to make sure all the wires get under. You don't want them hanging out, frayed out, or anything like that, because that's when things sort out, and spark, and then you got fire. See, so as you're twisting it down, since you wrapped it around, it's pulling it in. Uh, 
hanging out. Then you want to give them both a yank. Make sure they both pull in. If you look at that, it's got a little notch in it. That's what I'm talking about. You want to make sure you never nick the, the casing. Because uh, that little nick will start a fire and burn down your house. That's one thing. When you build houses a lot and do stuff like that, you learn a lot of extra trades and stuff because you're always helping people when they're like they're, some worker doesn't show up or something. I've done just about every trade there is. So you take a little piece of what, you know, take some tape. Oh, you gotta go back out. <laughs> I guess I should have been smart and fed it from the inside, huh? From the outside in, but. Like I said a hundred times, I do everything backwards. Alright, now you can see I've got a 2x4 that comes down, so it can only go up like this high. So let me get a hammer and hammer that bad boy in there. going to keep this permanent I would just get one of those wire wrap and slide it around it but I just want to keep this you know together so oh shit that's funny <laughs> I'll do the front ones. <clears throat> I'm just going to drill them by hand because my drill press was too close with this to get it. So I'll just wait and drill them by hand. But that's not important right now. You know, it dawned on me with my tool. Let me see something. That shouldn't. I was thinking. Yeah. There's a belt on here. Okay. Yeah. Because the box is going to come out to here. I wanted to make sure if I was hitting it across. Alright. I figured I better double check that before I get crazy. <laughs> she didn't mount it. Alright. I bought like five straight screwdrivers because I keep raising them. Either from prying cells off the surface grinder or what, but... thing you want to check is right here. It says 120 or 110 and 240. I'm on 230 so we're good here. 230. Um, then the jumpers. That's where the paperwork comes in. See here's a little thing for these pots. But we let them get to that first. First is wiring. So I wonder if they were supposed to send three of these because this one never showed up. 
but there's usually you drill holes through these, but that's all right. I'll, I'll find some somewhere or something. So you always want to cut it long. Because uh, you can pull it back out. You can't make it longer. See, there's only two lines here. So you can't back get the line in backwards. And here's ground. So let's get these. Yeah, you always want to do it longer in case something gets messed up and you, know, you don't have enough room or whatever. Cut it long. Like I said, these two don't matter because they're both hot. Now, if it's 110, it does matter. And you got to make sure black is hot and white is neutral. Under. There we go. Tight. See, like I said, this is a lot easier than the Chinesium because it's all right here. Now, there are settings, so you don't want frayed wires like that either. So make sure that happens. You pull them out and start over. Nice, solid connections. Nice and tight. Get a ground. Green is always ground. Unless, uh, unless otherwise stated. Like red. <laughs> Best when doing wiring and stuff to get the single wire. But the reason I don't like the single wires is because it's so stiff and hard to work with. All right, our power is hooked up. Now, UVW. Here's our motor. Here's a lot of extra wire. <laughs> yeah, I used the bungee cord to hold this open, so. <laughs> I said okay so here's UVW and here's green for ground okay. All right, let's do this. UVW black is U so we'll start out with W my OCD is saying W should be white and V should be red for violet but oh well <laughs> I don't know if you saw that with just did, but this one wire went up into there. That's how you surely blow something. That's why you always gotta check and make sure wires are not hanging out. And that they're tight and not touching anything. Oh. <laughs> As I'm saying W should be white, I hook up W to white. <laughs> Did y'all catch that one? <laughs> That's why you write it down, see? One of these days you guys will believe me in my OCD. Am I doing everything backwards? <laughs> now you want to double and triple check everything. Red goes to W. V goes to white. And black goes to U. And I'm just gonna keep it like that in there. Enough tension, tape that up. All right, we got ground. 
Hot, hot. And then ground over here so you can get to it. Alright, the green is on there and it ain't going nowhere. These are all on there. So, can we dare? Make sure it's stopped. Nothing's blocking here. I'll have to tighten that down. Kick on this circuit breaker. I don't really know what factory settings are, so I'm going to turn this all the way down. Kick this on. Power status. Oh, just. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, that's pretty. I don't think we need any settings there. Yeah. Okay. See how it breaks like that real quick? It starts real quick. Let me do one thing first. Now remember, Scott, let me turn this power off. Stop here. Stop here. The amps on this are, uh, 5.8 so 2 to 20 amps here's one we got moving around that I just can't see it <laughs> around it there we go alright now start Take this on. Come on. Oh. 2.4. All right. So we're only running. We're only running at half our goal. So, but the brake and all that seems to be set up pretty good. CL, yeah, CL trim pot. That's that one right there. So we can turn CL up just a hair. Now let's see where we're at there. The deceleration. Deceleration. Turn pot is this one. Cut it down a little bit. Deceleration. We'll cut down a little bit. Actually, let me make sure I have the it in the right one. J7 is this one. J7 is set. We set it down to adjust. Yes. We set this down like that. Now we can adjust the brake. Haha! <laughs> That's a little too quick. Uh, <laughs> so let's put it back up. Alright. Yeah, it's still a little too quick. That's about three seconds. That's good. Acceleration is good. See, what we got? Motor horsepower. Oh, I had to switch that. Because they had it right here. They had it set for a 1.5, but I got a 2 horsepower. So I had to move that up to A. 60 hertz. We want J5. Yeah, we're on 60 hertz. Uh, our motor's starting good, so we don't need boost, boost mode. I think that's it. So we want minimum down, maximum up. Now, let's see where we're at.
da. So I think we are good. Yeah. So well, I guess you know what it would be if I overclocked this to 120. I can set that current. Let me stop this. Yeah. Okay. That's what it is. So if I set if I set that to do 120 hertz, which is double. I can limit the current down so it only go up to like six instead of going to ten. Alright, so <laughs> we are finished here. Yeehaw! Oh, I hit the wrong one. Uh, oh, that's your uh, capacitor's draining. Okay. That means it still has power in the unit. You see it's off. Yeah, see. All right, yeah, that stayed like that because your capacitors have to drain. So, let me get this all tightened up. Yeah, if anyone's doing one of these and they have any questions on what this is about, what it means, from doing the VFD, the Chinese one, I know what most of these settings are and I can help you. Let's just give it a quick uh, run through. See how we're doing here. There we go. Let's turn it on. Power, status. Everything's charging up. See, that's why I wanted to put the switch in. I don't want this on all the time. If something happens, I don't want it, you know, power here. Now it's going to suck to wait for that thing to charge up and get going and get boosted. But it's a little, you know, I can always leave that on the whole time. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, If you need to hook one of these up, you know, I can guide you through it the best I can. I guess tomorrow I'm going to rewire that. Doesn't really need it, but just to be on the safe side, I probably will. Let me clean up here. Thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Any questions, let me know. As always, take it easy. It's been a fun build. It's finally over. Back to the kitchen night. Ha, 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 ha.